We're also following some other developments, this time out of New York, where the attorney general's office is now making moves, suggesting that the state at this point may start to try to seize some of the former president's assets if he fails to pay that nearly half a billion dollar bond in his civil fraud case. So something that, as we know right now, yeah. he cannot do. His lawyers has, have argued he'll be unable to satisfy that. And, and there's that deadline looming only about four days away. CNN's Kara Scannell is on this. Uh, Kara, what are you learning that Letitia James is weighing here? What moves is she making toward this? So earlier this month, just about a week after the judge finalized the $454 million judgment that Trump personally faces, the New York Attorney General's office filed this judgment in Westchester County. What that means is that it sets the stage or makes it possible for her to potentially move forward to try to seize assets in Westchester. That's where he has a golf course. Also, the family compound known as Seven Springs, an estate um, crossing over three different um, uh, jurisdictions. But it doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to move to seize those specific assets if it comes to that. You know, the judgment is also in New York, where Trump has a lot of properties, Trump Tower, his penthouse apartment there, the hotel at the corner of Central Park, as well as the office building, 40 Wall Street. So it's essentially making it possible to set the groundwork that if she does want to move forward to put liens on these properties or move to initiate foreclosure proceedings, that is in place. They are, are, are on notice. Now, I also checked some of the county clerk's office in some of the other places where Trump has properties in Florida, in Chicago. I didn't see any judgments there as of now. Um, so right now it looks like the set, the stage is getting set to move in New York. But of course, there is still time, although that clock is ticking, as Trump is waiting to see if the appeals court is going to allow him to post a smaller amount or allow him to not post any money until the appeal's over. The New York Attorney General's office has opposed that. And Trump still does not have the money to satisfy that half a billion dollar judgment. Boris, Erica? In terms of that, right, I mean, are there any other options at this point? We know we've been talking about, of course, the 30 companies that refuse to loan the, or underwrite uh, that money, and the deadline, as Boris pointed out, is looming. As you're talking about, are there any other options left? So Trump could potentially take out a mortgage on some of his properties. That's pretty complicated. A lot of the large financial institutions stopped doing business with Trump years ago. You know, also some properties, you know, there are questions about what their value is. That was the issue in this whole case that the judge found that Trump inflated the value. So com companies generally would want to do their own homework before deciding whether to issue a mortgage on a property. And also mortgage interest rates are high right now. That makes the cost of doing that pretty expensive. And we've seen Trump publicly state that, you know, this is an expensive process for him. That is one option. Uh, there could be a donor that comes in last minute and offers to give Trump cash for this. Uh, remains to be seen if anyone credible is going to do that. And then, you know, he could potentially have a fire sale of one of his properties on his own. I mean, the clock there, again, is ticking. It seems that is unlikely. Uh, surely Trumps are working behind the scenes as they're facing this deadline. Uh, but, you know, if not, we'll see what happens on Monday. Erica, Boris? Kara Scannell, thank you so much. Let's bring Jennifer Rogers back in. So, Jennifer, let's say March 25th comes, this bond isn't paid. How quickly will we find out if Donald Trump is going to have properties seized? Well, it'll be still a bit of time, Boris. There's a whole legal process around seizing assets. First step, apparently, Tish James and her team has already started, which is to file the judgments in the relevant jurisdictions, but that's only the first step. Uh, and it's even more complicated when it comes to real property because, you know, it's not like Monday you're just going to see a team of sheriffs go up and put a padlock on a building or anything like that. Uh, there's paperwork steps. Um, Trump may have the ability to challenge some of those steps before things are actually seized. And of course, seizure and then sale and then taking the assets. So uh, it will be a while uh, before anything really happens. But I think that the, we'll, we, we will hear something from the court between now and then because you know there's a lot of scrambling going on. So I expect we'll hear something from the court one way or the other, whether they send it back to Judge and Goron for some sort of fact finding about what's been done and possible solutions, or whether the court itself will speak, we'll find out. We also, you know, as Kara pointed out, she she went and looked. She looked at Miami. She looked at Palm Beach County, Cook County in Illinois. No judgments entered there. But when people think of the property that Donald Trump owns, the most well known would be, of course, Mar-a-Lago and Trump Tower in New York. Do you see either one of those realistically being seized? 
I mean, it's really hard to say. It just depends on how many assets there are that are in New York. New York assets are easier for the attorney general to get to um, because they're here. They can file more easily. So I think they would probably start there. And remember, it's not just real estate, even though Trump doesn't have enough in cash or cash like assets like securities to cover the entire bill. He has some. So you would want to probably start with those liquid assets anyway. Uh, and then for the real estate that does exist, some of them, uh, some of that value is already encumbered in other places as he's taken loans out based on the collateral of those right. real estate properties. So um, it's not as if you have the whole value of a Mar-a-Lago, for example, even if you knew what that value was, which of course is part of the whole reason that we're here in the first place is that those values were uh, exaggerated. So, um, you know, it, 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 it depends, but uh, but we'll see what they do. It, it is a, a complicated picture. I have one more procedural question for you, Jennifer. Uh, there was this debate between the Trump team and the AG, the Trump team saying we looked at 30 different companies. Nobody could provide us this massive figure, $464 million. Letitia James argued back, essentially saying, well, maybe they can't give you all of that, but you can go to these companies and separately they can give you small chunks that then add up to that number. Is that a realistic argument from the AG? Could Trump pursue that? Sure. And, you know, in fact, the one thing that Team Trump did say is, why don't you make it just a $100 million loan, a $1 million bond, and then that we can do. So then the question becomes, well, then why don't you just do two of those or three of those or four of those or however many you can get? Um, there's, there's one of the problems here, and I think the AG puts her finger on it in her responses, there was not much transparency around what the Trump team actually did and what negotiations are actually were with these 30 companies. So it very well may be that there is the opportunity to piece together smaller bonds to make up the whole amount. The issue is just making sure that the people can be whole at the end of this. If at the end of the long appeal, the large judgment is still upheld, then you know they need to be paid. So that's what the bond is for. But there's no reason they can't be a bit creative about how to make sure that money is there. And one scenario, as you mentioned, we wind up seeing a fact-finding mission to figure out just how extensive yeah. the Trump team's research was in, in trying to get this bond. Jennifer Rogers, appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Trump is fundraising, sending a text to supporters yesterday reading, keep your filthy hands off Trump Tower. Uh, so what he is doing, and I just want to be clear, he's not asking his supporters to pay his bond. He's asking his supporters to give money to his campaign, which also contributes to legal fees. Exactly. And you can double dip in a sense because, I mean, there is a limit for con for con for contributing to a, a political campaign. There's not the same limit for a legal defense fund. And, and if but, I may, he's also, I mean, this is what he does. And right. everybody in politics does this now. He's trying to rile up his potential right. donors sure. to get angry to send money. And one thing that is clear that we've seen really for now more than a year is whenever he is in legal trouble, it has helped him uh, politically. Yes. So imagine the scenario um, I heard uh, one of our legal experts uh, saying on our air this morning that, uh, you know, the visual of uh, Trump Tower being padlocked or something and, you know, they're seizing property. Imagine how that would help the former president politically. Imagine how those images would sort of build onto this. So even though legally and financially it's not good for him, we do not necessarily know that politically this is not good for him in the moment. It's just one more a part of what a lot of voters see as a pylon effect for him. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this drumbeat to the uh, Monday deadline also keeps Trump consuming all the oxygen in this race. Yeah, that's right. And that is such an important note of caution because every single time, I can't think of one example right yeah, now, I'm sure there not. is, where sort of the conventional thinking in a conventional campaign about a conventional politician was, From the mug this shot is going to hurt other him. Things yeah, and boom, right. boom, 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 yeah. and it's, uh, I mean, going even back to when he would, would, was trashing John McCain, didn't hurt him.